Hello Giants fans and welcome to Valentine's Views here on the Big Blue View YouTube channel. We're about a day away from the 2024 NFL Draft and I wanted to hop on here uh, today and, and talk a little bit about the uh, the increasing speculation that the New York Giants are, are hot and heavy after Drake May potentially being willing to trade up from number six to number three uh, with the uh, the New England Patriots to to try and get the uh, the North Carolina quarterback, uh, I am all in on that speculation in terms of believing that it is true that the Giants would love to get Drake May if they possibly can. Um, I've been saying that for a while at Big Blue View and, and here on the show that I think Drake May is the guy who would be the the Giants' primary target at quarterback if they're able to get one in the first round. And I talked to Ty Dunn of GoLongTD.com here on the show uh, the other day, and uh, he and I agreed on that. Um, Ty is a guy who watched the Buffalo Bills. He's, he lives in Western New York. He's got connections uh, with the Bills. He he sees the Bills firsthand. And I look at, at Drake May, at the physical characteristics of Drake May. I look at the, the college scouting report on Drake May in terms of accuracy issues, in terms of some of the decision-making issues. And I... I can't help but think about Josh Allen. I can't help it. Allen the, the shares a lot of the physical characteristics with May, had questions about his, his completion percentage, his decision-making coming out of Wyoming. The Buffalo Bills traded up twice to, uh, to select Josh Allen when Joe Shane was assistant GM, when Brian Dable was quarterbacks coach not quarterbacks coach but offensive coordinator there in Buffalo and that of course worked out spectacularly for Buffalo Dable is a guy who has said again and again that he loves Josh Allen uh, talks a lot about you know how Josh Allen makes a quarterback or a, a coach's life a lot easier I can't help but think that that Brian Dable and Joe Shane having seen that model having worked with that model would uh, would love an opportunity to try to reprise that model with Drake May there's some discussion and some people might ask well you know a few weeks ago a month ago it sounded like the Giants were all in on JJ McCarthy and now it seems like that that love that interest has switched to Drake May, and, and here's here's what I think: they may really like JJ McCarthy. Given an opportunity, they might take McCarthy at six if if he happens to fall there. You know, who knows what's going to happen in the first five picks of the draft? But what I think, to be honest, is what happens in the draft cycle is that coaches don't get involved in the draft cycle really until somewhere around the combine. They don't really get fully invested in that draft cycle until somewhere around the combine. When you go through the season and the coaches are involved in the nitty-gritty day-to-day of running their teams, of trying to win games on a week-to-week -week basis, of preparing for opponents, and then they spend time at the at the end of the season doing some some self assessment doing some grading of of their own players looking at their own rosters checking you know going through free agents that that the team might go after because that comes before the draft so there comes a time at some point in february probably where these coaches begin to get heavily invested in the draft you go through the the combine, you go through all of the uh, the meetings and, and all of the workouts and the pro days and the 30 visits and, and all of that. And I can't help but think that Dable and the Giants coaching staff, maybe Mike Kafka, because, you know, Kafka coached when 
Patrick Mahomes was in Kansas City. I can't help but think that Brian Dable is at least partially behind what appears to be a push by the Giants to uh, to to try and get Drake May. A- and listen, you know, if if the Giants trade up, people ask, is it worth it? And you know, I I look at it and I say, if you get it right, if you get it right with a quarterback, it's always worth it. Brandon Bean, when he made the trade for Josh Allen in Buffalo, said, you know, he he was heavily criticized for making the trade up, the two trades up to get Josh Allen. And he said, look, he said, you know, it's either going to work. I had conviction, you know, on, on Josh Allen. And if it doesn't work, I get fired. If it does work, nobody cares how much I paid for it for to go get the guy. And that's been the circumstance in Buffalo. Nobody cares because he's a top five quarterback in the NFL. He's a great player. Nobody cares how much Ernie, of course, he paid to go get Eli Manning. Nobody really cares that the year after the Giants made that trade, they only had four picks in the 2005 NFL draft. Nobody cares how many picks he gave up or how many of those guys became really good players for the Chargers because Ernie Accorsi and the Giants got two Super Bowls out of that trade for Eli Manning. If you get it right, it's always worth it. If you think you need the quarterback, have a chance to get the quarterback and you get it right. If it works, if that guy becomes a great player, the price is always worth it because quarterback is the most important position in football. You have to have that guy. You can win in any given year without that top five, top 10 quarterback. You can win with a with a middling quarterback who gets hot, gets on a nice run. You can win with a great roster surrounding a mediocre quarterback in any given year. What you can't do is compete on a year in and year out basis. Have a chance every single year to to put together a team that's a championship caliber team or a team that at least has a chance to to make a run at at a championship. You can't be consistently good without consistently good quarterback play. So for me, that swing is always worth it if you have conviction that that that's your guy. I keep saying this, I say it over and over. It's it's a bigger sin not to take the swing if you see a guy that you love. If you need a guy, see a guy that you love, have that player within your grasp, within your reach. It's a bigger sin not to take the swing than it is to swing and miss. You swing and miss. I've, I've, I've shown you guys the, the data at Big Blue View since 2010. I think some, I think it's 38% of quarterbacks drafted in the first round who have become what you would grade as solid starters or above, solid starters, Pro Bowl players, Hall of Fame caliber players, 38%. So teams are going to swing and miss more often than they're going to get it right. But if you want to be a top-tier football team, you have to take the swing. You have to try to get it right. So I would fully support the move if The Giants decide to make it, you know, whatever the price tag is. I know it would make it difficult for them to to add a top tier wide receiver. I know it would make it would put a dent in their 2025 draft class. But if you get it right and you're a good GM, then you find ways to compensate for that. You you find ways to bring in the right players to support that quarterback. Um Another thing, you know, about this whole deal is 
all of this speculation might be moot. Albert Breer of, of Sports Illustrated said he still thinks the Patriots are going to stay at three and probably select the quarterback they want, probably Drake May, maybe J.J. McCarthy. You know, Robert Kraft has said repeatedly he wants a quarterback out of this draft for the Patriots, and all of this discussion might be moot. Um, I did find it interesting that Diana Russini of The Athletic said that that one of the issues for the Giants is that ownership has reportedly pushed back on the idea of trading a whole bunch of draft assets a year after giving Daniel Jones the, the big contract. And, and listen, I understand that. And I will understand if, if Drake may becomes a great player and, and we find out for sure that, that John Mara and, and Steve Tish wouldn't let Joe Shane go and make that trade. Um, you know, that then I know that the howling about John Mara being too involved is is going to uh to surface again. I get that. I would you know, I understand that stance because you you made the commitment to Daniel Jones, but if you're John Mara, if you're Steve Tish, you also said that you wanted Joe Shane and Brian Dable to make that ultimate decision on Daniel Jones. And there's a reason why they only gave him two years of guaranteed money. So if they're out on Daniel Jones and they have an opportunity to get a guy they think can be the successor and, and can be better than Jones, then if your ownership, I think you have to let them make that call. For me, the way I look at it is if Joe Shane and Brian Dable don't get this thing turned around in the next couple of years, uh, I'm not saying after 2024, but if they don't get this thing pointed in the right direction in the next couple of years, they're going to get fired anyway. I would hate to see the Giants handicap Shane and Dable in terms of their decision-making and then fire them a couple of years down the road, you know, after after not allowing them to make the call and build the franchise around the player that they wanted to build it around. So we'll see what happens. It's a really interesting situation. And before I sign off, one thing I did want to mention, Dan Graziano of, of ESPN mentioned that he believes that if the Giants don't get Drake May, um, that if J.J. McCarthy is off the board, he believes that the Giants might be desperate enough for a quarterback, that they might, they might be willing to go as far as taking Washington quarterback Michael Penix Jr. at number six. I would be, I would be surprised by that, but Anything can happen in the draft. We know that there's a lot of people, a lot of analysts who think Michael Penix is QB2 in this draft. I still come back to the fact that that I think it's very, very difficult for the Giants to take Michael Penix off two knee injuries, off two shoulder injuries, four season-ending injuries, including one to his throwing shoulder. I think it's very, very difficult for the Giants to look at Daniel Jones and say one of the reasons we're moving on is because of his injury history with with two neck injuries and knee injury, uh, you know, a couple of uh, couple of of ankle sprains or whatever it's been that have cost him games here, you know, here and there along the way. I think it's very very difficult to replace Daniel Jones with a guy who has a longer injury history with a guy who's had more surgeries than he's had with a guy who's you know who's who's had a pair of of knee injuries and and those shoulder injuries I think that's a difficult thing for, for the Giants to be able to sell um, I know that a lot of people like Penix but that one would really really surprise me you know the other thing about Penix is that Penix doesn't offer much in the quarterback run game which is something that Brian Dayball has come to utilize quite a bit, you know, with 
first with Josh Allen and, and the last couple of years with, with Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor, even Tommy DeVito. So Penick's move would surprise me. Nothing about what would happen with the Giants if they were to make a move for uh, for Drake May would surprise me at all. All right, uh, Giants fans, we'll know in, in about a day what what will happen and what all of the speculation amounts to. And uh, so hopefully you guys will uh, will be following all of our coverage at Big Blue View. And I just also wanted to, to let you guys know on Thursday morning, uh, Big Blue View staff, myself, Chris Flum, Nick Filato, Tony Del Genio, all of us will be here on the Big Blue View YouTube channel for a, a live stream at 10 o'clock Eastern time on Thursday morning. Hopefully you guys will uh, will be able to, to join us for that, you know, bring some questions, bring some comments. The four of us will uh, will debate Drake May, we'll debate uh, Chris's decision to trade down and take Bo Nix in the mock draft that he posted uh, today at Big Blue View. We'll talk about some of the uh, some of the decisions as far as how guys were rated on the big board. Uh, we'll talk about uh, anything and everything that that we can think of in relating to uh, to Thursday night's draft and uh, and what happens subsequently on Friday and Saturday as well. So hopefully you guys take some time to uh, to to join us for that on Thursday morning. And also please remember to uh, like, share, and subscribe to. Uh, to Big Blue View YouTube channel here, and uh, you know, just to show support for the channel, which we which we always appreciate. So, as always, thank you for listening. Please stay safe out there. Take care of each other, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.